Hello friends, in this video we are going to see the development of decision support system in detail. Development of decision support system. We can develop the decision support system by two ways. First is system development system and second is prototyping. First we'll go one by one. So first we are following the traditional system development method that is SDLC or a waterfall model or we can say a system development life cycle. So we follow their total five steps. First is we are gathering the product requirement. Second is we are designing our model. Third is we are actually implementing our model. Fourth is we are verifying or we are testing is it correct or not or properly designed or not. And the fifth step, we actually maintain that whatever the uh, deployed product. Now we'll go one by one. In a planning phase, first we ask the question that why we build the system. Okay. On the basis of that, some minor step we have to decide. Like identify the business value. So if we identify what is the business value is, so on the basis of that, we'll get some system requirements. Second, we have to analyze the feasibility of a model, like how it is feasible for our future market. So on the basis of that, we have to do the feasibility study. Third is the development work plan. We have to develop a work plan that what we are actually going to do, how it is going to perform and like that. So in the deliverable, we'll follow the work plan for the model. In the fifth, we have to follow the staff project, like how many staffing we required, what staff we required for what department and like that, and how many, uh, what type of skill that staff should be required, like that we have to form in the staff project. In the fifth, that is control and the direct project. So for that, we have to decide like project management tools, case tools, standard list, project binder or files, some risk assessment like which we are going to follow like that we can plan at the time of planning stage. Second stage is analysis stage. In that we have to ask the question like who, what, when and where. You can say who, who can use the model. What are the different uh, techniques we can use while designing this model or what type of technique will be useful while designing this model that will give you the more profit in the market. So those different different analysis we have to do while performing the analysis stage. So minor step is analyze the problem in that we'll get we have to deliver the analysis plan like what we are going to do, how we are going to do, when we are going to complete this, where it, we are going to launch and all that. In the seven we have give to gather the information. We have to gather that what are the ex exact data we require at the time of uh, before the implementation we have to gather that data whenever it is required we can fetch it so in the deliverable we uh, we should have a uh, information in the eight we'll take a model process so model process means we'll have the process model like which we are going to design and how it is going to be so like that we can do in the model we can say uml diagram you have to form one uh, united uh, unit of a model diagram through that you can decide like this entity we require and this entity we doesn't require like that so you can do it in the process model and ninth one is process data or a model data so through that we can decide ki what model we are having at a time of future next step is design stage in that actually we are going to see that how the system is going to work or how the system is going to actually design so the stage will decide the tenth, uh, the step in the tenth, we follow that design, design the physical system. So we'll plan, plan the design like with the help of different different tools like algorithm, flow charts. Then I said entity diagrams and all that. Then different different pie charts and all that. After formation of those charts, we decide that is it a proper design or not. The eleventh step, we follow the design architecture. So architecture of a design or a infrastructure design, we follow. In the design phase in the 12 we actually follow the interface so actually how the interface interface means uh, actual GUI part where we follow like we get an interactive session with the user 
so this is one type of GUI I can say when I select a minor step I'll get some minor step related to that so similar way if you go to the ATM machine whatever the data tools you follow and those buttons are called as a GUI graphical user interface so we follow that interface we design that interface at the time of design next is design the database and files which are actually going to require at the time of data implementation and 14 steps it design the program so program should be flow program is not actual program we actually started designing a flow of your programs in the next step we actually implement our code like system delivery in the implementation we actually construct the code with the help of test plan programs and the documentation after formation of a code we final step we follow is installation in that we actually follow the conversion plan and the training plan like what we are going to do how it is going to perform and all that we have to form at the time of implementation now what are the problem faced at the time of implementation stage first is no project team or a management support will be there second is has a purpose or we can say a no, no defined schedule or a ballooning of a scope third is unclear aspects of a make versus buying decision a few project integration are functional out of the box qualitative benefits are there no user buy-in poor project management skill and no accountability or no responsibility will be faced so these are some problems we can face at the time of implementation stage second alternative development methodology which we follow is prototype approach this is similar like as dlc but for this some point of changes are there performing the analysis design and implementation phase concurrently and repeatedly so this stage where we actually in the waterfall we just follow once one once only in the full project we follow that step only once but in the prototype approach we follow the step one by one whenever we require we go back and we once again perform it whenever it required so users see the system functionality quickly and a provider feedback Decision maker learns about the problem but can lose a gain in a repetition. So prototyping. Performing the analysis, design and implementation phases concurrently and repeatedly. Users see the system functionality quickly and provide a feedback. Decision maker learns about the problem but can lose in a repetition. So basically this is exactly the diagram of a prototyping where we follow a need planning, analysis, design, and implementation, prototype, and system. After getting a prototype of your model, if that prototype is okay, then we deliver the product. But if that prototype is not okay, then once again we check that is the design issue, is the implementation issue, or the analysis issue. If it is there, then we follow if the analysis issue, then once again we go back to planning, we'll check is it proper, and once again we come back to analysis we check the analysis part then once again we go to the design phase we implementation phase like that so as per the problem we face it on the basis of that we go to the stage and we follow that phase once again that is a prototyping so problems are same structure can be or it can be unstructured a manager and a developer may not be completely understand the problem so that time they can use the prototyping there are some terms which we actually use at the time of prototyping like iterative design right we go back and once again we can check once again we forming a cycle and once again we check it second is evaluationary development yes it is evaluation one evaluation comes and second evaluation comes once the prototype final comes in and so we check that it is a first evaluation right we can say a version so if that version is correct then it is okay but if it is not and once again we go back and we check with a different version Next is middle out process. In the middle out means consider at the analysis phase only we found an error. Then that time only we can go back and we check the planning. Then uh, fourth is adaptive design. Adaptive design means we are not uh, losing our older version. We are keeping it as it is. And once again we are adapting with the new features. Incremental design, as I say, it is an incremental model. It go by one by one. It forming a different different version 1.2, 1.3, 1.4. On the basis of that, we actually increment the design and through that we forming a final prototype. Advantages of prototypes are it requires a short development time because see it at once it comes back and then it check for the prototype. It is okay, then it gives the deployment. But if it is not okay, then once again it go back. 
but at least we found one model which is actually there which we can at least launch second is short user reaction time right because see it going on the each and every phases so the each and every phases is checking the problem so that time user does not have to think about much more time third is improve the user understanding yes because it's when it come one by one it check the user understanding level as well. and fourth is it requires a low costing disadvantages are gains may be lost in uh, needs through understanding if the information system benefits and losses some detailed description of information needed like easy to maintain the information system design well tested information system is required and well prepared users are required so these are some uh, development technologies which we have to follow while designing the decision support system and that two are the main model like sdlc there is a waterfall model and third is the prototyping model thank you